that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Tonight's Green Light Maine is sponsored by Maine Biz, Maine's business news source. Good evening. Welcome to Green Light Maine. I'm your host, Julene Gervais. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have 26 successful companies this season doing great things for Maine's economy, and they are looking to expand their businesses by competing for the $100,000 grand prize. They are all terrific, and the tough part for our judges is choosing only one of two companies each week to move on to the next round. Before I introduce tonight's first contestant, I would like to welcome tonight's experienced panel of judges from around Maine's business community. First, I'd like to welcome Jamie Oakma Lee, who is the investment manager of the Maine Venture Fund. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Great, thanks for having me. Uh, the Maine Venture Fund is the state's uh, venture capital fund, and we invest in uh, growing and promising Maine companies around the state. Excellent. And next up is Luke Livingston, which is the founder of Baxter Brewing Company in Lewiston, one of the state's favorite brewing company. <laughs> so welcome and tell us about Baxter. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh, just shy of seven years old, the third largest brewery in the state, make the state's best-selling IPA. Excellent. And our final judge is Martha Searchfield, who is the executive director of the Bar Harbor Chamber of Commerce and also owns a BB, and b Canterbury Cottages. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course, as a Chamber of Commerce, we are very supportive of new and upcoming businesses in the state of Maine. Excellent. Thank you all for being here. And I'd like to introduce tonight's first pitch. It comes from North Spore. Let's welcome Alaya Tanhauser. Whenever you're ready, just go for it. Thanks. Thank you, Julian. My name is Elia Tanhauser, and I'm one of the co-founders of North Spore, along with John Carver and Matt McKinnis. North Spore produces specialty mushrooms, mushroom products, and mushroom spawn. John, Matt, and I met at College of the Atlantic. After graduating, Matt went on to work in the food and beverage industry and graphic design. John got a graduate degree in mushroom biology from the University of Wisconsin, and I worked in sustainable agriculture and managed an organic farm here in Maine. We started North Spore three years ago with less than $10,000 startup capital in a small 500 square foot garage in Westbrook. We started off washing things in a 55 gallon drum with a garden hose in the driveway, but from the day we moved into that space, we worked at North Spore full time, so we were motivated to generate revenue as soon as possible and make the business profitable. Within six weeks, we were selling mushrooms to restaurants in Portland. We now sell to over 75 restaurants in Maine, as well as grocery stores and specialty distributors. We also send mushrooms to Boston, New York, and Seattle twice a week. So our fresh mushroom business has grown very quickly, but we're also really excited about our spawn business. As a seed is needed to grow a plant, mushroom spawn is needed to grow mushrooms. And as most vegetable farms don't produce their own seed, most mushroom farms don't produce their own spawn. We produce spawn for home growers, for diversified farms, and commercial mushroom farms. Our grow at home log kits enable everyday gardeners to grow mushrooms at home. So when we started North Spore, we anticipated the huge demand for fresh mushrooms, but we didn't anticipate how large a demand there would be for our mushroom spawn. We now sell to commercial mushroom farms across the country, but we've maxed out our production. The mushroom industry of today is a lot like the microbrew industry of 10 years ago. It's exploding. The popularity of specialty mushrooms in the US is growing very quickly, and more and more farms are opening to fill that demand. We do no sales or marketing for our commercial spawn, but just through word of mouth, Facebook and Instagram, we have new commercial customers approaching us each week asking to place large standing orders. Unfortunately, at this point, we're turning them down. So in three years, we've taken our business from three friends growing mushrooms out of a garage to a business with 13 employees, no investors, and we're closing in on a million in revenue this year. $100,000 from Greenlight would enable us to buy new lab equipment, and that would allow us to produce 15 times our current spawn production without incurring any more labor costs. Nice job. And I have to say, this is beautiful, this arrangement that you have here. It doesn't even look like it's something that you eat. It's a very nice, like, would be a nice centerpiece on a table. So great Thank job. You. And this is unique because it's like combining technology with farming. Awesome. Yes. Okay. How about Jamie? First question. 
Great, well it sounds like you have a great core team, uh, which is really important. I'm just curious how you guys uh, distribute your responsibilities. So Matt, John, and I are a really good team. Being in business has not jeopardized our friendship at all. And luckily, we have a very diversified skill set. And we've kind of designated roles and fallen into different roles very well. Um, Matt does sales and marketing. John oversees mushroom production and spawn production. And I do a lot of the financial and business responsibilities. OK, Luke. I appreciate the microbrew industry analogy, for sure. but. My question, you, you mentioned uh, kind of a word of mouth marketing plan. Uh, if you, you know, increase your production by 15 times, what's the marketing plan after that? So uh, right now, just the mushroom growing community is very connected. So it has worked to just word of mouth and through Facebook and Instagram. But as we scale, we'll do online marketing. We'll also do sales. Um, we'll travel throughout the country and uh, national, internationally. Uh, meeting with mushroom farms, giving them samples, and we have a very competitive product at a competitive price um, and are doing something that really no one else is doing. And so we will do sales as we need to. Martha. Is the, uh, the sales of the spawn currently seems like it's uh, to commercial, direct to commercial. Are you also planning on growing a, the direct to consumer side of the business? Yes, the direct to consumer has huge potential because no one is doing this. We'd like to see our kits that enable any gardener to grow mushrooms in Home Depot, um, Lowe's, Whole Foods. And we do sell them online. We're in 40 garden centers in Maine and New Hampshire. Um, but we see, we have to get some marketing momentum behind that, but I see a huge market because there's a lot of people that are really excited about gardening and they haven't known they could grow mushrooms. Okay, well, excellent job. Thank you so much for being here tonight. So please stay with us. When we come back a little bit later, our second contestant is gonna show you what you can use to eat these mushrooms. So don't go away, more green light is coming at you. Greenlight Maine would like to thank the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, the Maine DECD, helping businesses and communities prosper. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C-level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform, engage, connect. Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. Dream Local publicizes the important part of me and what I stand for and what Archers is about. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We are changing things up just a bit tonight, and we have been invited to the beautiful office space of one of our sponsors, Maine Biz, here on Free Street in downtown Portland. And joining me now is the publisher, Donna Brassard. Thank you so much for being our sponsor, and thanks for having us. Welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Um, so Maine Biz has done so much to bring together the, ba the business community. Can you tell us about some of the services that Maine Biz provides? Sure. Well, of course, Maine Biz started out with our flagship publication, Maine Biz, that comes out every two weeks and is statewide. Um, people are loving our daily e-news. It mm -hmm. goes out every day before noon, so you have that information armed with it when you go out to lunch, so you're, you can have good conversations about what's going on in Maine. Um, and, of course, our website at mainebiz.biz. And then um, our events, which um, are really have grown tremendously over the last few years, mm -hmm. um, that we're really getting out and about and able to talk to people face to face. And we were talking about on the road earlier, right. Right, how initially when you started it, you had something in mind that has worked, but has also done so much more for the business community. Right. So a few years ago, we started the on the road with Maine Biz events because, as you know, Maine's a very, very big place. And we wanted to make sure we were all getting out there to all the various parts 
north, south, east, and west of Maine. And we thought we would be the new the new people on the block and you know get to know people in the community. And what we're finding is that the community does know each other. And so we've been able to bring them together at these events and get people who are working down the street from each other to talk and to connect. And as you know, as you said, face-to-face uh, work is it works much better uh, in Maine. That's how you, the best way to do business is in front of people, not hiding behind a desk or a cell phone. Absolutely. So encourage when you're and you were saying you're going to be in Bethel this yes, year. Yes, yeah. yes. It was so. Reader's Choice. We we do Reader's Choice every year, and so the winner for 2018 is Bethel for Reader's Choice, and we'll be other places as well. So let's talk about the show, yep. in Greenlight Maine, and the contestants and the startups that we have on. Sure. What advice could you give to them, as far as you know? Running a business or Correct. starting a business. Sure. Well, it's advice that's been given to me many, many years ago, which is don't fall in love with your product. Mm -hmm. I think that it's really important that people are passionate and excited about what they do, but they have to take a practical approach to it as well. If they're too emotionally involved, they're not going to be able to really see what's really happening and to have a really good business plan to market and make money with their product. I think that it's important they surround themselves with um, smart people that can give them really good advice. I think it's important that they read Main Biz to find out what other businesses' experiences have been, where they have succeeded, and where they have fallen short. So I would think that that's the best advice I've been given that I would give to others as well. Sure. Just don't get too emotionally attached. Exactly. If somebody comes along and offers you $5 million for your product, you better be taking it. Take and it. Start another one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and don't hold on. Um, so that's really good advice. So let's, um, we got one, we get time for one more question. Let's, can you give us a sneak peek of what's going on in 2018 with Maine Biz? Sure. We're right in the middle of 2018 planning right now, and there's a lot of things happening. But the big thing is we're going to be investing in a brand new website platform. It'll be a responsive design, lots of new functionality, um, lots of new content for our, both our readers and our advertisers. So that's what we've been working on, and that's been a crazy experience, but it's going to be great when it's all done. Oh, great. And we'll look forward to checking that out Absolutely. as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have our second pitch of the night, so don't go away. Thomas College believes in innovation. From the Harold Alfond Institute for Business Innovation and our Center for Innovation and Education to three-year undergraduate degrees and accelerated graduate programs in business, cybersecurity, and criminology, innovation is in our DNA. Money Magazine ranks Thomas 23rd in the nation for value, and our Guaranteed Job Program backs that up. Thomas College, personal, practical, guaranteed. Thomas College is a proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine. I'm George Gervais, Commissioner of the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development. At the department, we're focused on making sure Maine people have the opportunity to build wealth. We do that through targeted activities aimed at retaining and creating jobs, marketing our beautiful state to millions of visitors, businesses, and marketing for workforce talent, helping new products and services and ideas commercialize, and getting Maine businesses access to new markets across the world, improving our competitiveness, making Maine open for business. I'm Michael Bork, President and CEO of Memic, where all of us want Maine to be a great place to start and grow a business. Over 25 years, Memic has led a reduction in workplace injuries of 40% in Maine, cutting the cost of workers' comp in half. Workplace safety is our passion, because when people are safe, businesses succeed. And when Maine businesses succeed, Maine succeeds. Memic, proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine, growing Maine one dream at a time. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Maine shows, visit greenlightmaine.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We just learned about the mushroom industry in Maine. And now our second pitch is from a company that has a new and improved way to eat those mushrooms. I'd like to welcome David Muse and Rachel Rodriguez from Sir Time. Take it away. Thank you. Again, I'm Rachel Rodriguez. This is David Muse. We're the creators of Sir Time Fine Ceramic Flatware. And like many Mainers, we care deeply about our food and how we interact with it. We've created a product that is the best way to interact with food. It is an absolute first-of-its-kind product in the market. And we have a patent pending. Mm. It's made from an advanced structural ceramic material, which is important to note. And we launched this minimum viable product about a year ago, and we had two goals. The first was to canvas the marketplace for a successful business model and get feedback. We also want to generate sales and prove concept. We've been very successful in doing both. We currently sell globally online. We sell in specialty kitchen retail stores, and we've demoed our product for Williams-Sonoma, who we hope will be an eventual customer. 
We've also reached a really broad audience with television appearances on ABC News. We've been in the Press Herald, we've been on AAA Magazine, and quite a few others. Uh, our research showed that we need some more patterns and some more designs, some more weights. That's going to take some investment. Uh, we need to expand our reach globally because we've had sales already in overseas markets. Uh, our research also showed some secondary and tertiary places for this product that we didn't know existed. Chefs being a big one. They came to us and they wanted a spoon made out of, out of, out of our material. And we were able to make that. We've already uh, got a distributor. They've completely sold out of our first run. And they've already asked for an expansion in that product line, which is really exciting. We've also heard from the healthcare community. We spoke to people undergoing chemotherapy treatments, those with metal allergies and those suffering from arthritis. And they've been looking for an, an alternative to steel. And they found that alternative in Sirtime. The question is, where are we now? And I think we're in that perfect sweet spot. We are a main base business that is self-funded and bootstrapped through prototyping and proof of concept. Uh, we've generated sales. We have a year's worth of market research under our belt. We know what we need to do to grow quickly, and we know how to do it. And we're ready to do that. We would use this money to expand our global reach, to engage the healthcare community, and expand our product line. We just need a green light. Great job. Thanks. I just have a quick question. Are there any chefs in Maine using your flatware? Yeah, so Emile from Sir Lee, which is a very popular spot on Free Street, you should check out if you haven't. Uh, Ilma Lopez, who's an amazing pastry chef and has, I don't even know how many restaurants now in Portland area. Yeah. Uh, and, and then David Levi from Vinland also has one of our spoons. So we're really, uh, we're, we're excited about that, about, about that uh, support. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Jamie, first question. Great. Uh, tell me, Obviously, they have to sell this product, so how much more expensive is it than buying a normal set of cutlery? So Crate and Barrel is a great gauge because they carry the most flatware in a retail store of any other. They have uh, single piece settings go anywhere from $18.95 to $89.95. The bulk of their product category is in the uh, $29 to $49 market. Ours retails at $39.95. So I'd say we're on the lower end of the premium market. Luke? I'm certainly not going to argue that it makes the the food taste better mm -hmm. but you're talking about an enormous paradigm shift away from yeah. every yeah. household in the country with steel cutlery H how are you going to do that mm. yeah so there's some great science on our side flavor scientists are researching this exact topic more widely and robustly than they ever have and they're publishing in peer-reviewed journals not that that's the most exciting way to sell a product but that science is going to trickle down to the consumer product or to the to the consumer industry so we're, we feel very confident that a mixture of science, the Pepsi challenge, if you remember that, I mean, you can go like this and like this with ceramic and steel, and it's noticeable with everybody that we've engaged with at this point. That's interesting. Yeah. And Martha? Would it be possible for me to actually hold one of those forks Please and do, yeah, look at it up yeah. close? Yeah. Fork, knife, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're very lightweight. Very nice looking. Do you have a question? Do you see this expanding? You said different weights, different lines. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean in design they would become fancier or? So we have the ability to make that in almost any color you could imagine. We also have the ability to apply patterns to it in various ways. Um, we also, the measure traditionally of a flatware company, like say Oneida for instance, is how many patterns you're offering, how many people you're engaging. Some people like that really regal, royal kind of look with lots of flourishes. Some people like a little more modern flourish. So that's what we're hoping for. The healthcare community loves the weight mm -hmm. currently because people with arthritis especially and chemotherapy patients are able to really engage with it in a way um, that makes it easy for them to use. Uh, in terms of that luxury market, which we'd like to chase after, that higher premium, they want, they want more weight. And Excellent. we're going to be able to achieve that. Excellent. Nice job, both of you. Okay, so we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get to the heart of the matter. And these judges are going to talk it all over. So don't go away. Please stay with us. Furniture for Greenlight, Maine is provided by Thomas Mosher Furniture. Handmade American furniture since 1972. Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. At Hortz Roofing, we pride ourselves on doing quality roofs. 
not social media and direct marketing. That's why we hire the professionals at Dream Local. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight, Maine will win this handmade Thomas Moser beacon box and $100,000. Broadcast facilities provided by NESCOM, the New England School of Communications at Husson University. Welcome back to Greenlight, Maine. This is the part of the show where we hear from our judges and they get to get it all out there, talk about what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you'd like to see from them moving forward. So what do you think? These are two great pitches tonight. I thought they were both pretty impressive, mm -hmm. the products, and I'm you know, impressed with both of the ideas. I really liked that uh, Maine Spore, North Spore, mm -hmm. was a completely a Maine company that's combining innovation with agriculture, mm -hmm. using technology, all right here in Maine. I, I really found that appealing. You're right, and that's the whole premise behind the show. I mean, we look to get you know companies on that start here, stay here, and grow here. So they definitely um, stand up to you know, the perfect prototype for, for Maine. Um, and I like that he's got a lot going on, right? So he's marketing to consumers. He's got his lab right here. So there's a lot um, that investor could really work with. I yeah. wonder, though, if, if that also lacks a little bit of focus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, if they're trying to continue to scale up, are they going to have to? And maybe not, but are they going to have to focus, prime, you know, on or have a separate division that is maybe um, you know commercial growers and then a, another arm of the company almost dealing with the you know the consumer facing side of things. Um, those kits were were awesome. They should. Yeah. So during the commercial break, you guys find out a lot more from these companies, and you they had the kits out, and you guys were tasting the mushrooms, and um, you know we we're talking about there. They have a couple of different players in their company that you wanted to hear about who their CEO, especially for someone like yourself who's going to invest in the company, of you know you want to deal with that one person, right? Yeah, I definitely um, would wouldn't mind hearing your take on that, like the three-person equal partner management team, I could see how that could be problematic down the road, especially from an investor point of view. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think it's it's exciting that sort of dy group dynamic when you are bootstrapping, when you're you know washing, washing dishes in the garage, like he explained, but um, as you get Kind of beyond that that first level, um, and really get to that that you know million dollar mark as as was mentioned. Um, I think you know I'd like to see some defined roles. Yeah, and I know I mean you own a bed and breakfast, so you're actually are serving people food. So what do you think about the the? I know we got to kind of touch and feel those. So I was glad I got to hold it and see it up close. I th I believe the science. I I wouldn't question the science behind it. But at this point, what went through my mind was, would I put this on the table at my B&B &B for my guests? And the answer was, I wouldn't at this point. Um, I think they have a, a pretty substantial hurdle they have to overcome in the consumer market yeah. because of the weight of it. Right, it was um, very lightweight. It was yes. very lightweight, and it just didn't have, to me, yet the right feel. Sure. I think the potential there's certainly, it seems like, a huge potential in the medical market. Absolutely. But that's yeah. also a hurdle to convince people things that are good in medical should be on your everyday table. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. Do the yeah. two go yeah. hand There's, in hand. Yeah. Right, right. But it's been ingrained in our minds that, you know, heavy, heavy is better. It's better yes. quality. So mm -hmm. with something that, you know, weighs as much as a plastic utensil, how are we going to get that on every table in America? I mean, right while now? they're not manufacturing that uh, their silverware in Maine, um, Maine does have a long history of material science companies, mm -hmm. so I do think that there is, that is um, a good fit for our state in the sense of like the material science and also the culinary yeah. ex yes. skills and expertise that our state has. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hear a little bit more of a, a marketing plan, a long-term 
vision. Sure. Um, you know, they're, they're, as I sort of mentioned uh, during the round of questions, it's um, stainless steel is, is in every household in America. It is, it is the standard sure. um, for, for flatware. You can't go door to door across the country anymore. Um, right. So, and they talk they talk so much about whole you know about physical demonstrations, product demonstrations. Um, that that's it's a pretty finite resource. So how right. you know how are you going to reach the broader audience? Right. So if they make them it. Of the science. Yes. It is definitely different. Uh, not what we're used to doing, right. but it's not unlike drinking good beer out Touché. of a can. Touché. So yeah. it can work. Yeah. Great discussion, all of you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to find out who gets the green light. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. As a leader in Maine and New England in providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to clients large and small, the team at MacPage has proven to provide innovative solutions to help us better meet our clients' needs. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do. The success of our business is based upon our ability to develop quality relationships, one client at a time. MacPage. Accessible. Approachable. Accountable. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C-level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform. Engage. Connect. Please visit GreenLightMaine.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. Welcome back to GreenLight Maine. It's time to find out who's moving on to the next round here at GreenLight Maine. Judges, who's it going to be? And tonight's winner is Norspor. Congratulations to Alaya. He is moving on to the next round. Well, that'll do it for us tonight. There are so many different ways you can be involved with the show, so please visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and check us out on greenlightmain.com for more information on the show and if you're looking to expand your business. Thank you so much for joining us here on Greenlight Maine, and we hope to see you right back here next week after Bill Green's Maine on WLBZ2 and WCSH6. Have a great night. Congratulations. Thanks great job. Yeah. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Maine Biz, Maine's business news source. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.